The team I'm on and AWS has been working on the next generation Amplify product. We're calling it Gen 2. And today I wanna to give you a sneak peek of what it's like to use and how you can use it with your Vue.js app, your React app, basically any front end framework and to be able to use it to create a full stack website and also have it hosted. So for those of you who are brand new, let me explain a little bit about this. I have here the docs website up at docs.amplify.aws. Right now, as of today, it's in developer preview. It will be in general availability soon. So if you've been watching this channel for a while, you've probably seen me add in Amplify into some of the Vue projects I've created in the past. So with this, Gen 2 product, it helps you create your back end for your front end websites. And it has deep integration so that when you do integrate it in, you can easily use our libraries to talk to those back end environments that are created. And so for this first initial release for general availability, we're focusing on four areas. One is authentication, you see here data storage and functions. So authentication, authorization, to make sure only certain people can access your app or certain resources. We also have a data layer that's backed by our managed GraphQL service called AppSync. We have storage, which is backed by S3. And then we have Lambda functions. So you can create your Lambda functions really quickly. And we use this infrastructure as code way of doing it with this code first developer experience. I think the best way to kind of demonstrate how these work is we're going to create uh, a new app using the console and then we can take a look at what it generated for us. So to begin, first you'll need to have an AWS account. And by the way, I'll put a link to the AWS free tier. You get literally thousands of free hours of time and compute time you can do things with. I would highly recommend checking that out. Other than that, after you create your AWS account, you can log into the console and in the console, you you just need to search for AWS Amplify. I already have it here. You just click on it. So right here, you can see Try Amplify Gen 2. So if I click Try Amplify Gen 2, so on this page, it's gonna ask us a couple of steps to create our app and connect it up to our hosting service, which will also deploy our back end. So there's two ways you can do it. You can actually use it with an existing app, which is option two. But today we're going to use option one, which is the Amplify Starter app. So what this will do is that there's an existing GitHub app out there. It'll clone that. It'll fork it into our own GitHub account, and then we can use it. So let's take a look. So we'll choose Next.js Amplify Starter. We'll click Next. And now it's gonna ask us for some permissions. So that way GitHub has access and we can fork it and put it into our account. So I'll go ahead and do that. So now it's on this page, it allows us to add the repository name. So I'm gonna call Amplify Next.js YouTube Starter. And then I can choose if I want to create a new service role. It's probably best just to uh, create a new service role. Now let's just go ahead and click Save and Deploy. And now what it's doing, it's creating that repository. It's forking down forking the repository that we have that has some sane starter stuff in it. And now we can use it. This will just take a moment. It, you can see it already brought us to this screen here. And what it's doing is it's actually creating the hosting environment. So app, this app is now hosted on our Amplify hosting, and it's also deploying a back end. Now let's take a look at what the app is that it created for us. Now, while it's deploying here, if I click on app settings and then I click on repository settings, it'll connect up to GitHub to make sure that we're all connected. And then right here, we'll see the source repository, but I'm just going to copy and paste it. And I'm just gonna clone it down and take a look at it inside VS Code. Okay, so here is the app, but this is the app it created. It's a Next.js app. And if we look here, it's using Next.js 13.5. And the most important thing to realize is if you use this template, it creates this Amplify folder for you. And what this does is, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there's really four types of ways you can create. There's four kind of sections in Gen 2 that you can use to create apps, and kind of building blocks. There is the authentication layer, which uses Cognito, there's data, which is used as our manage app sync service. There's storage, which uses S3, and there's functions we use as our Lambda functions. And so we're creating infrastructure as code to create these backend resources. And we have this layer, this Gen 2 layer on it, that makes it really straightforward to create these resources. So out of the box here, it creates a Cognito resource. And this is the way you, you can use this to log in and log out. You can do authorization and authentication. And it's set up through email. 
And of course, we can always change some of these too if we need to. And then it also created a data layer. So it creates this data layer using the Manage AppSync service, the Manage GraphQL service, AppSync. And what this does, it normally with GraphQL, you have to create resolvers and resolvers have to talk to different data resources. Just by these few lines of code, we'll create all that for you. So we'll create a DynamoDB database. We'll also create all these resolvers so you can do all the things you normally do, the create, read, update, and delete with this, just this code here. One other thing we'll need to do is we'll need to do npm install just to make sure everything's installed. We can make changes to this at any time. We can push it up and it'll update our repository and our hosting at any time. All right, so we have everything started. If I do npm run dev here, we can see here, this is our Next.js app. This is what it comes out of the box. And if we come back over here, once it's deployed, this link right here will go to an app that looks exactly like this. So we can, if we want to start making changes and just do like a hello world. If we make the change here, come back over to here. So now we just see hello world as we expect it. If we want to, we can actually create a local environment, which is different than this one. So right now this one is creating a, a production environment for us. So every time we push up to our repository, it's going to update this URL and you can think of it. Every single GitHub branch can be another environment that you have connected to your hosting and your backend services. But if we want to test locally, there's a command we can do this. There's a command we can use to do this. So we can do MPX amplify sandbox. And obviously you only have your AWS account. If you don't have it set up, this will give you an error and it'll give you some instructions on how to set it up locally. If you don't know how to do that, you can always look at the documentation. It's in here, configure your AWS account to use Amplify. So there's a few, few steps that you'll have to do that, including running this NPM Amplify configure, but I'll assume that you did that. Now, if I'm running Sandbox here, it's going to actually create an ephemeral environment that I can use to test our app locally. So the production environment is completely separate. This will be our local environment. So we'll just give it a second for this to start. All right, so our sandbox is done and it went ahead and created an ephemeral environment that we can now use to test with. And you can see it outputted a bunch of data for us and it created a new folder, uh, a new file actually called amplifyconfiguration.json in the root folder of our app. And we can use this to help test locally. So to do this, I went ahead and added in some code for the sake of the length of this video and I'll show you what I did so we can test this out. If I go into the page.tsx file, I added in some a few things in here. So as we look at this file and I'll put a link to this in the description if you want to look more closely, I installed a new library called Amplify UI React. So this library right here, it's a component library that has some boilerplate code that you can add to add in extra additional components that work with AWS services. And one of them is the authenticator. And it also includes a whole component library. So I'll show you this. So this authenticator allows us with just these, I don't know, five, six lines of code to add in a login system to our app. And it will automatically connect up to our resources that we've already created. I also installed this configure. I added this amplify.configure. And what this does is it takes this file. I'm imp importing in the configuration from the amplify configuration JSON file. I'm importing an amplify and I'm configuring it. So everything talks together. And so for the authenticator, I'm saying, once you log in, you'll display this data, including this new to do's. So if we look at to do's by default, there's this, if you look in the package.json, it installed this AWS amplify latest. So this is the library that will allow us to connect to AWS services. And if we go to, to our to do's, I just created a, a very straightforward, a way to add and display to do's. I didn't add any way to delete them, but certainly if you're following along and watching this, see if you can pull down this repository and add a delete function. I'm using this client. And one thing nice about this is I'm using this generate client from the AWS amplify library. And then I'm also passing in the schema. So if you remember earlier, I showed you that the schema to add this to do's was defaulted in here. I didn't change anything. I just left it as default, but we could certainly make it to whatever we want it to be, but it exports the schema type. 
And so now I can import that schema type into my generate client, and now I get full type safety. So if, for example, if I type in client dot, now I can see everything I want. I can do dot models to do, and here's where I can do create, delete, get list. I can do observes, uh, queries, all these other things, and it's all typed for me, which is really straightforward and nice. So if we look at get to do's, I'm doing a list, and then I added an add to do, which uh, automatically adds this content. So I have this input right here with add to do. I have an on change handle with a use date to set it. And then I have a submit button. So anytime you hit enter, it submits the add to do and it creates this new to do and then it lists it. So let's take a look at and see how this works. First, uh, this is the authenticator. It came out of the box. I didn't have to do anything here. What I can do is I can create a new account right in here, create a new account and then sign in. I went ahead and did that off camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sign in real quickly and enter my data in. All right, so it just signed in and here it is. Uh, I went ahead and added one piece of uh, content in here. You could see right here, I'm just doing a map just to list the content and ID. If you look here, all I have is this content so that's all I have. It's a very simple model. And then I have it also, you also have an ID that it just automatically creates for you. So if I come back here and I add, let's say a second to do, like let's say mow the lawn. Here it is, mow the lawn is at the bottom. So I can also at any time sign out. Now you're thinking like this is an ephemeral environment. This isn't my production environment. Let's say I wanted to have this be as production. Well, all I need to do is I need to add here. So if I go back to my console real quick, we haven't pushed anything. So if we click on this, it still shows the old template. If we want to push this production or whatever branch we have set up, I'm just going to add it. I'm going to commit it first commit, and then I'm going to push it back to my repository. And you'll see right away, if I come back here and we can say, see a second, and now it's deploying again. So it's checking to see if any changes to our Amplify backend and also change, making any updates to our front end. So let's give this a second and see if it updated in production. Okay, it says the resource is deployed now. And if I click here, and this is my production account. If I click here, oh, great. I can log in. Let's, I'll log in real quickly. I'll create a new account. All right, so I'm logged in. And by the way, this is completely new information. This isn't the ephemeral environment, so I don't see those to-dos I created on that environment. This is brand new. And if I do uh, mow the lawn, hit enter. Great, so it's now connected to my new production app. Awesome. Let me know what you guys think of Gen 2. Leave a comment below. I'll put links to the docs and to this app so you can play around yourself. I'll be creating more videos after we go through a general availability and show you again. But this is a really powerful tool to create a full stack app. I'm really excited to share with you guys. Thanks. Take care.